how to use the polar coordinate system. And now we're going to talk about how to graph polar equations and convert polar equations to Cartesian ones. So in our Cartesian world, we're used to seeing things like y equals mx plus b. And you see this and you say, hey, that's a line. Or you see y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And you say, oh, that's a parabola. Or you see x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And you say, hey, that's a circle of radius r. So we're used to, you know, without even graphing them, right? We can just look at these equations and we know what they're gonna be. But if I said, what is r equals one? and you've never seen uh, polar coordinates, you might have to think about what this looks like, okay? So for graphing polar equations, we're gonna to start to build an intuition for what those look like. So let's take r equals one. What would this look like on the polar plane? So r equals one means, and I'm not gonna draw all the circles and everything for every one of these, but I start off with one, and then for every single value of theta, it doesn't matter, I always get r equals one. So r is always gonna be, our, our, our graph is always gonna be a distance of one from the pole, right? So this is called the pole, this is called the polar axis instead of the x-axis and the y-axis. And then this line here, which we usually think of as the y-axis is called the theta equals pi over two line, okay? So for r equals one, um, if I had, let's say y equals one, what that would be is we'd say, okay, well, if y is equal to one, then no matter what x I have, I always have a height of one, if this is y equals one. Um, and that makes sense because we have a grid, right, on this plane. So if this is the y equals one line, we just color it in. But on the polar axis, we actually have circles, right? And those circles tell me the distance from the center. So r equals one is actually gonna be a circle centered at the pole with radius one. Okay, how about theta equals pi over four? Well, for theta equals pi over two, uh, sorry, pi over four, no matter what r I have, my angle is always going to be pi over four. So for theta equals pi over four, I should get something like that, right? Because my angle here is always going to be pi over four, no matter what, okay, what r I have. Um, so that's gonna be pi over four. And if we take something a little bit more complicated, such as uh, r equals two cosine of theta, well, that's gonna give us something a little bit different. And we're gonna get to uh, more complex graphs in a little bit. But, um, so for now, if you wanna plug that in your calculator, sneak a peek at what it looks like, um, you might be surprised. Uh, but for now, we're gonna talk about how to convert back and forth uh, between Cartesian and polar coordinates try to erase all this stuff. So if you want to convert back and forth, it really comes back to that picture we drew earlier um, in the first video, where if I have a point here, um, that point makes a triangle, where this is x, this is y, and this is r, and this is theta. And then I can say, okay, well, if I want to convert between x and y and r and theta, right, because this point has two ways of notating it, either x, y, or r, theta. Well, I can find expressions for both because I can say that r is equal to, using Pythagorean theorem, uh, the square root of x squared plus y squared. I can say theta is equal to the arctan of y over x. Uh, and that gives me a way to go, if I have my Cartesian plane coordinates and I want to switch over to polar, I can do that. And if I want to go the other direction and kind of I have polar and want to go to Cartesian, I can do that too. So I know that x is going to be equal to r times the cosine of theta. And I know that y is going to be equal to r times the sine of theta. So note that every term in here is dependent on the both terms from the other uh, coordinate system. So you really do need both pieces of information to convert back and forth. So let's look at an example. Um, because this can help us to, to really see why polar coordinates are useful, right? If we take something kind of ugly in polar, uh, sorry, Cartesian coordinates. So I take something like x squared plus y squared equals nine, right? This is a circle of radius um, three. And if I wanted to write this in Cartesian coordinates, yeah, we use this notation, but if I wanna put this into a calculator to graph it, I have to solve for y. And then we have a radical, we have a positive and a negative, we have to graph two halves, 
really gross. But as we kind of saw in the last video, if I just take this, I say, well, r equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. So x squared plus y squared must be, if I square both sides, it must just be r squared. So um, that means I'm going to have r squared equals 3. 9, sorry. <laughs> r squared equals 9. So then I get r equals 3. And now that tells me I have a circle of radius 3. This is way simpler than that, right? And, and, and this is one of the, the nice things about polar, equation, polar equations is that they allow us to represent functions or I should say, um, exp, you know, expression, not necessarily functions, but let us represent um, things in that are really kind of ugly or difficult to represent in Cartesian coordinates really easily and nicely in polar coordinates. Uh, but I also don't want to lose sight of the fact that Cartesian is still really good for some things, right? If I want to do a parabola, y equals x squared, right? I want to do that. Uh, in Cartesian coordinates. If I want to switch this over to polar, what happens? Well, I get r sine theta uh, is equal to um, x squared. So I'm going to have r squared cosine theta squared. Well, now I'm going to have, okay, so I'm going to have uh, r squared cos squared theta minus r sine theta equals zero. We can pull out an r, I guess. So you'd have r equals r cos squared theta minus sine theta equals zero. This is this is pretty gross, and like we can keep going with this, but a parabola is really best represented in Cartesian. Um, at least a parabola is kind of centered at the um, with the vertex at the origin. And if we add things in, if I say plus, you know, this is a x squared plus b x plus c this just gets a lot worse as we transform it over. Um, it gets really, really ugly. And you have to actually use the quadratic equation to end up solving for something um, just in polar. So I'd rather leave this in Cartesian. But we are going to see some um, that there are parabolas and uh, particular uh, classes of parabolas and ellipses and hyperboles that are actually also easier to graph in polar as well. So we will look at that next. Um, so that's how you convert back and forth between them and uh, how you graph polar equations.